Today we break down a full preseason slate in the NFL, one of the best wide receivers, not only in college football, but he might be the best in the NFL one day as well, and Two Minute Drill where we preview one of the best teams in the country. It might be USC, it might not be. Stick around, here we go. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Football Takeover YouTube show. I'm your host, John Harris, CEO, founder, owner, uh, contributor, all that to footballtakeover.com. Make sure you're checking out the site, footballtakeover.com. Got my Harris 100 there. Got the top 50 SEC prospects there. Got a Drake May scouting report. Got a lot more. So make sure you check that out. S uh, August and September, really good rates to get in on footballtakeover.com. So I appreciate anybody doing that, but I appreciate you being here. We got a lot to do today. We're going to take a look at the preseason. We can review. We're going to look at a great receiver in college football right now. In fact, he's the namesake of one of the greatest of all time. You know who it is. Marvin Harrison Jr. We're going to break him down. We're going to put the film on bro on Marvin Harrison Jr. And we're going to do a little two-minute drill. I'm going to try and do something in two minutes, which you know is an absolute impossibility, but I'm going to try. And today, we're going to break down the USC Trojans and where I think they'll end up. So we're going to do that. But we kick off every show with the football takeover cover three. Three news items covering all of football. We start number three, where Ezekiel Elliott is a Patriot. Now, Ezekiel Elliott plus Bill O'Brien could be some really good fun. But one thing I know that OB is going to love about Ezekiel Elliott is the fact that he pass protects, he's tough, he's big. And I got a feeling the Patriots are going to do some ground and pound this year with Ramondre Stevenson and Ezekiel Elliott. So as long as Zeke stays healthy, as long as Ramondre stays healthy, I think that's going to be Mac Jones, 15 throws a game, and the rest of them are going to those two backs, and they're going to ground and pound teams in submission. I think that's the only way the Patriots are going to win games this year. So Zeke Elliott is a Patriot. Very interesting stuff. All right, let's go to Texas A&M locally here. Now, this name may not resonate mm, all that much right now, but I had a feeling this guy was going to be an excellent future pro. Donovan Green, tight end, super athlete. Torres ACL going to be out for the entire 2023 season. I know the way Bobby Petrino, offense coordinator there at AM, would like to use the tight ends. Green was going to have a big year, man. I think catapulted himself into NFL consideration. So I think that's something that's going to hurt this AM offense. But Donovan Green, tight end for AM, out for the year, torn ACL. That, that's a gut punch for that offense who needs every weapon possible. Look, they've got Evan Stewart, then they got Moose Muhammad. That's as good a one-two combination you're going to find at receiver, but having that tight end to balance it out would have really made Connor Wegman's um, situation throwing the football that much easier, but not going to have green this year at a and All right, let's get to number one. A guy that I know very well, Jadavion Clowney. Visited the Baltimore Ravens, but left without a deal. He also visited the Jacksonville Jaguars and left without a deal. Now, I think he takes those two defenses to a different level. Not that JD is a tremendous pass rusher, but the way he plays the run and where you can move him around to, I think he's still got that in his bag, that club in his bag. It never really turned into the pass rusher that maybe we thought he was going to be, that knee injury, that microfracture that he got, I think, to weigh a lot of his mobility. So I think that is really, uh, unfortunately, where we, we lost a little bit with JD, but he's visited the Ravens, no deal. Jaguars, no deal. Now, I also know that JD's somewhat allergic to training camp. So I think he'll pick a spot probably in the next week or so. You have a week to get ready. Um, and then he'll be ready to roll week one. Hopefully it's not Baltimore because I do not want to see him in Baltimore. And I really don't want to see him in Jacksonville either. So hopefully some other team swoops in and snatches up JD uh, for 2023 and beyond. But best of luck to JD. And that is your cover three. All right. It's time for our preseason week one rapid fire. Yeah, rapid fire. What happened in week one in the NFL in the preseason? Get me on the clock and let's go. Preseason game number one took place in New England where the Texans, yeah, my Texans, beat the Patriots 20-9. to The Patriots looked completely lost offensively. Yeah, a lot of starters didn't play. Belichick, not phased though, just said, you know, it's another step in the process. And we'll see what they've got in week two. The Texans are definitely improved for sure. I don't think 
I mean, I've been saying it for forever um, with all my texts and stuff. They're definitely a different team. Held the Patriots with a first down for like two and a half quarters. That defense showed up 20 to 9. Texans get the win. Packers took on the Bengals. And the Packers walked out of there 36 to 19 winners. No Joe Burrow. A lot of starters out of this one on both sides. Jordan Love did step up and start. Thought he threw it pretty well. Had a touchdown. Really good rating. I think he had one drive, maybe two. But the winner of the night was Emmanuel Wilson out of Fort Valley State. I know he transferred at one point, but rookie running back, six carries, 111 yards, and two tutties. As the Packers get the win, 36 to 19. Love 7 to 10, 46 yards, one touchdown before yielding to Sean Clifford, who was kind of all over the place. Uh, he's kind of like Nuke Lelouch. He's all over the place. So I don't know, maybe he needs to start wearing garters. Uh, but he had a touchdown and two interceptions. Uh, but the Packers get the win by 17 in Cincinnati. Seahawks taking on the Vikings. Not much going on here. 24 13. Seahawks get the win. Two rookie first rounders. Wide receivers one at JSN. Jackson Smith and Jigba. Jordan Addison. Didn't do a whole, whole lot. Uh, did show they belong, but one rookie wide receiver showed himself. That's Jake Bobo from UCLA, formerly of Duke. Led Seahawks with three receptions for 55 yards and a touchdown. Seahawks 1-0 in the preseason. Lions and Giants, 21-16. And watch for Jameer Gibbs. Well, he looked really good for the Lions. The few touches he got early. He actually made a tackle on an interception. Nate Sudfeld, not good, through two in that game. But rookie quarterback for the Lions, Adrian Martinez. Scored the game winner with a sneak, which is not surprising. Adrian Martinez is one of the better running quarterbacks in college football. Five-point win for the Lions. The Steelers took on the Buccaneers 27-17. Calvin Austin the third, flying past everybody in a Buccaneer uniform. My man Zion McComb had a pick for the Buccaneers. Uh, but by the way, Keanu Benton was one of my top 100 players. How in the heck did you let him get to Pittsburgh? He is going to wreck shop. He wrecked shop the other night. Keanu Benton, the rookie. Nose tackle for Pittsburgh is going to be a superstar. Falcons still on the Dolphins, 19-3. to The Falcons come up with a win. The Dolphins had as many points as they did interceptions thrown by Skyler Thompson and Mike White. Falcons get three of them, including one by one of my favorite guys from Alabama, DeMarco Hellams. I thought he's completely underrated. Falcons get the win, 19-3. to As the Dolphins get ready to come to Houston this week. Commanders took on the Browns. Sam Howell had a good night. 9-12, 77 yards, a touchdown. Looked good. Seemingly, he's the starter there in Washington. Deshaun Watson, 3 for 3, 12 yards. Good first drive for the Browns, and then he was out of there. But Commanders with a two-point win, 17-15. Cardinals took on the Broncos, and, well, the Cardinals did try and troll the Broncos after on social media. I don't know. It's preseason. Calm down. But the Cardinals did get a win. Clayton Tune, I thought, threw it pretty well for the Cardinals. Russell Wilson, the Broncos' offense, stayed in until about seven minutes left in the second. Sean Payton not real happy with them, but... Russell Wilson, the Jerry Judy touchdown, helped get the Broncos on the board. That's probably good enough, a good enough start for the Broncos. Uh, but Cardinals get the win 18-17 to in Arizona. The Bears took on the Titans in Chicago. Justin Fields, 3-for-3, three 329 three, yards and two tutties. Both of his touchdowns came on screens. He was 2-of-2 two two on the screens for 118 yards and two touchdowns. So that's where the majority came from. I don't know how much more you can say about the Bears' offense. I do think the offensive line looked better. Titans, quarterbacks, exactly what you expect. Malik Willis, erratic, all over the place. Moments of brilliance. Will Levis, erratic, all over the place. Moments of brilliance. They're the same guy. They're the same guy. And if the Titans uh, are going to have anything this year, they're going to need Ryan Tannehill. And they're going to need a compliment to Derrick Henry. And I think they have that with Taji Spears. He looked fantastic. And by the way, Andre Dillard. Formerly one of my favorite tackles in the draft. I thought it looked really good in the run game for the Titans at left tackle. He looked like he belonged in an offense. So Andre Dillard, that's going to be a good fit for them at left tackle. Peter Skronsky at left guard. That's going to be a good left side if they can stay healthy there in Tennessee. Good start for them from that standpoint. But quarterback situation still not totally resolved with the Titans. Other than, well, Ryan Tannehill better stay healthy if they want to win games. The Colts. Went to Buffalo. The Bills got a win, 23-19. It was the Anthony Richardson show early in this one. And just like it was Will Levis looking exactly like he did in college, Anthony Richardson looked just like he did in college. Dime down the sideline, even though Alec Pierce couldn't come up with it. Tremendous throw. He ripped one across the middle on a throw. Great. Most snagger out. He missed a guy by five yards. Then he throws a pick. What is he doing? Then he escaped out of a run. Like, yeah, that's what I meant. He's the exact same guy he was at Florida. Exact same. And if he is that guy for the Colts, they'll be 5-12. and 12. 
He's got to improve all facets. Decision making's got to get better. The physical tools are there. There's no question. No question. But it's the Colts. Uh, starting quarterback, Anthony Richardson, he's going to be the guy seemingly. Seemingly. But Matt Barkley stole the show. I think it was a 14-15, two tutties. As the Bills get a 23-19 win. The Jets dominated the Panthers 27-0. It wasn't even close. Why? Panthers offensive line let Bryce Young get hit and hit and hit and hit and hit again. And almost every throw he made, Bryce was taking a shot. He complete one. Bam! Will McDonald, Jermaine Johnson, that defensive line, it's going to be nasty. Facing the Jets this year, they're going to be rolling pass rushing. It is exactly like Robert Sala had it in San Francisco. One pass rusher after the next. Jets 27, Panthers 0. And Zach Wilson is showing a lot of improvement for the Jets. We know it's Zava's show. But Zach Wilson, whenever Zava's done, and Zach Wilson's still with the Jets, they're going to be able to hand it off to him, and he's going to be in much better shape, and the Jets are going to be in much better shape as a result. Jaguars went to the Cowboys. Jaguars quarterback Nathan Rourke with the play of the year in that Jaguars win. Escape and throw, I mean, just incredible. 103.3 rating uh, for Nathan Rourke. Trevor, 5-6 for 36 yards, a tutty, and a pick for the Jags as they get the win, 28 to 23. But the big news for the Cowboys, Zach Martin has signed his deal. The All-Pro Future Hall of Famer will be back in camp, and that will help the Cowboys very, very soon. Ravens beat the Eagles. They kept that 24-game winning streak in the preseason alive. Jalen Carter got a lot of social media time with his win up front, if you will, on the very first play. 60-yard field goal from Justin Tucker gives the Ravens a win. That's a team that we'll see week one, the Texans. Uh, but the Eagles fall 20-19. to Chargers, Rams is the TCU boys show. Darius Davis returned to punt. And, man, you talk about slippery and electric. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Off to the house. Quentin Johnson with a touchdown catch uh, for the Chargers. But stealing the show was Northern Colorado rookie running back Elijah Dotson. Yeah, I know. Me too. Six carries, 92 yards, and two touchdowns. Two touchdowns for the Chargers. They went 34-17 over the Rams. Stetson Bennett with a touchdown throw. Shaky a couple times at a couple of near interceptions, but threw a dart to Puka Nakua. By the way, that was one of my favorite guys at the Senior Bowl. And he was gone after day one. I thought, man, what's going on? Why he fell in the drive, I don't know. That guy is, a, he's a stud. Puka Nakua for the Rams. Keep an eye on him uh, down the road. But Chargers beat the Rams 34-17. Saints beat the Chiefs 26-24 on a last-second field goal to win it. The story here, Derek Carr, James Winston both look very, very good. Both threw touchdowns. On the first two drives, they look superb. Saints get the two-point win. And the Raiders, how about Aiden O'Connell, Purdue rookie. Best rookie quarterback performance, 15 of 18, 144, 141 yards uh, passing and a touchdown. He was fantastic. And the Raiders jumped all over the 49ers, 34-7. Now, the crowd, on the other hand, was like 34-7 for the 49ers. That was wild. There was a ton of red in that building. A ton of but the Raiders get the win. And that is good news for Josh McDaniels. All right, that's your week one slate in the NFL in the preseason. Week two coming up this week, uh, starting, I think, on Friday. So a lot of stuff going on this weekend in the NFL, no question. Now, a guy that's going to eventually be in the NFL, I wouldn't be disappointed if he ended up in Houston. But who's to say where Marvin Harrison Jr. goes? I just know he's going to hear his name within no worse than the top five picks, depending on where the quarterbacks are going to fall in this draft. Marvin Harrison Jr. is an absolute dude. So I put the film on, bro. The name Marvin Harrison still in my world uh, kind of shakes me up a little bit, considering the fact that Marvin Harrison was such a great player for my favorite team's rival, the Indianapolis Colts. Well, maybe Junior can end up being a Houston Texas at some point. Well, he's going to be an NFL player. There's no question about it. 6'4", 215, A.J. Green-like skills, but I think a more complete receiver at Ohio State. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the absolute truth. He's number two in the Harris 100 behind Caleb Williams uh, in front of everybody else. And he, he, I think, is the best receiver that I have rated just off the top of my head, I can only think of Jamar Chase being in that class. And I think Harrison Jr. is is even that much better. Why? Well, let's just talk about physical gifts. This is a great play to look at here with uh, Michigan State. You're going to see him out wide. He's going to be isolated right here uh, on the corner. 
And when I cut this piece, I cut this piece and I, I labeled it Marvin Harrison Jr. Screw the route, moss him. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. I, I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is actually a very, very good route runner. He's crisp. Uh, I like the way he gets in and out of his cuts, especially the guy his size. I think he runs his routes. He has a very innate feel for openings and zones, uh, moving with his quarterback as we saw in the playoff game. But this one is just pure athletic ability in going up and getting a football. So you'll see here, he, as he gets off the line of scrimmage, you're going to see him dart out, go in, and then come back. Well, he kind of sold the DB so hard outside first that when he goes back, he's well, the DB is actually in great position. So there's that move right there. He's like, oh, man, uh-oh, what do I do now? So he actually is kind of a victim of his own rut running circumstance here. So when he goes back this way, he realizes, oh, well, all right, well, let's just go for the ride and see what happens. And this is where Marvin Harrison Jr. is just great because that guy's even with him. But at 6'4", 215, and tremendous ball skills, he's just going to go up with his ball right off the top of the head. Right off the top of the head of the Michigan State defensive back. So his route didn't win, and he knew that. But he never gave up on it because he knew if this ball's in the air, it's an 80-20 ball. It's an 85-15 ball. I'm going to get this throw right now. I'll moss this guy. It doesn't matter that I didn't win with the route. I'm going to win with my ball skills and athleticism, and he's going to do that when he comes to the NFL. There's no question about it. He fights for the ball, gets a touchdown, gets a DPI in the process. I mean, this is just absolutely incredible. I mean, watch this. All the way from the beginning. Let's watch it full right here. And you can see just how magical this actually is. Touchdown, Marvin Harrison. He's absolutely ridiculous. He can do anything on a football field. I think he's better than his dad, which is hard to say because he's all famer. Um, I think he's more complete. I think he's bigger. I think he can do more on a field. I think he's more versatile. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to come to this league, and he is going to be an absolute stud, no questions about it. Now, there's a stud out in the West Coast, in the city of L.A. He quarterbacks this team, the USC Trojans. See, got my, Mar my little Marcus Allen uh, figurine. Is that the good way of saying it? Well, Marcus Allen is not part of the Trojans in 2023. But the Trojans are definitely a team to keep an eye on in 2023 for a number of reasons. So let's do a little two minute drill. I got two minutes to tell you and convince you of what USC is going to be in 2023. Now, this team, number one, Caleb Williams, a quarterback, stud. He's the best quarterback that I've studied other than Trevor Lawrence over the last, I don't know, seven, eight years, maybe more. He, he's incredible, he's a magician. He can do anything with a football in his hands and that alone will keep USC in every single game this year, last year, keep in mind how many games did they win putting up 40? They went to Utah, put up 42, and couldn't hang on because Utah went for two. Now, the defense will get to that a little bit, but they have a chance every single week because they have Caleb Williams. Now, what they also have is an experienced O line, but one of the best players on the offensive line is a transfer, Emmanuel Pregnant from out of Wyoming. He's going to play guard, and I think he's going to end up being a stud. I watched him against Boise State last year, and I wasn't even watching for him. I was watching for a Boise State D lineman, and he took over, he stole the show. Pregnant moves next to Jonah Monheim, who I think is tremendous. Um, I think an offensive line can be very, very good. It transfers offensively. Two skilled players, Marshawn Lloyd at running back to go with Austin Jones. And then you add Dorian Singer from out of Arizona to come join that group with Mario Williams, Taj Washington, all and the like. Uh, Brandon Rice, I believe, is still there. I mean, they got loaded. And now you add those two into the mix. There's no question. They got a stud Mike linebacker transfer in Mason Cobb who came from Oklahoma State. Now you put him with Shane Lee and you put him with Eric Gentry. Well, that defense starts getting uh, pretty interesting. Kalen Bullock is at safety. I think he's one of the hardest hitters in the game. I think he's one of the better safeties in the game. I don't think he's one of the better tacklers in the game. That's got to improve. If that can improve, then Bullock is a top 50 candidate top 40 candidate at that point. Right now, he's probably in the mid-70s for me in the Harris 100, which you can check out at footballtakeover.com. Defensively, I think the back seven is going to be athletic up front. I don't think they're quite all the way there yet, but they've got a couple transfers. Jack Sullivan coming out of Purdue is going to be very, very fun to watch. They're non-conference games. San Jose State, Nevada at Notre Dame. It's pretty fair. 
I think it's fair. I think Notre Dame's going to be salty, um, especially at Notre Dame wearing the green jerseys. But they'll go 2-0 to start the year. There's no question. In conference, they're crossover games. Cal, Washington, Oregon. Very interesting. I don't think Cal is all the way there yet. But Washington, Oregon. Woo! Tough ones. They have to go to Oregon. But they get Washington at home. So where does that leave them? With all of that said, I think it puts them at 11-1. and I think there's a possibility that they lose to Oregon on the road. But I do think they beat Washington. I think going to the Pac-12 championship game. This time they win it, beating Washington again and get themselves into the playoff. But that's where the dream ends. But Caleb Williams will give them a chance every single game, also because he's got Lincoln Riley alongside. Now, I know I went longer than two minutes, but I think the Trojans got a great chance out in the Pac-12, the last year of the Pac-12, to really do what they need to. Tough schedule because of those road trips to Notre Dame and Oregon and getting Washington and USC at home. But with Caleb Williams, a loaded offense, they got a chance to outscore everybody and give that defense a chance to really get their game in shape uh, for the remainder of the year. So keep an eye on that. Early on, scoring a lot of points to win. Later, maybe that defense starting to step up and make some plays under defense coordinator Alex Grinch. Fun team, no doubt. I watch every game USC plays. That's as fun a team to watch in the country. Are they top four? I don't know. But I'm going 11-1, win the Pac-12, beat Washington, which is tough because I think Washington's very, very good. Get in that playoff, and that's where the dream ends. But USC hasn't been there, so I think that's a victory nonetheless. And this show is a victory, and it's done. And I appreciate you guys for being here. FootballTakeover.com. Make sure you're checking out. Tell everybody to like, share, comment, subscribe. Get my subscriber numbers up there. I don't say please, but just want you to watch, hang out, have some fun talking football, uh, because that's what we do on this show. And it's all football, for the most part. Until my daughter comes in, then we have some fun. Uh, But we like to have some fun with football. So I appreciate you being here. We'll see you next time. And as always, good night.